I flew on one of the world's best first classes while my girlfriend was stuck in economy. I'll explain later. I'm sad, we have two weeks not being able to see each other. Originally I had her booked in first class on the same flight as me. Plans changed. She's going on a little family trip now. So she's going back to Hong Kong. Too late for me to try to find any business class availability. So she's on Hong Kong Express Economy. I'm on ANA First Class, the suite. Because we're flying in first today, I have access to the ANA Suite Lounge. While this was more crowded than I would expect for a first class lounge, it wasn't too bad and there was a wide variety of seating choices. Now for the self-service food options available, it was pretty mid, mainly consisting of light bites. I do appreciate the fact that they have ice cream though. For drinks, the selection is decent, but there's no bartender, so it's all self-serve. Our saving grace for the food here is that there's also an a la carte menu that you can order from. A la carte dining is one of my favorite things to have in any airport lounge, so this was great to see. I ended up going for the plant-based burger, which I thoroughly enjoyed. To pair, I had a glass of champagne. Just kidding, that is sparkling water with a bit of ginger ale mixed into it. With the departure time now approaching, I was hoping to be able to take a shower. Unfortunately, despite registering for the queue immediately after entering the lounge an hour ago, I was still waiting and getting a bit nervous I would not be able to make it. Luckily, right before I was about to leave the lounge, a room opened up. This was a great shower with good water temperature and excellent pressure. Although I just wish I had a bit more time to enjoy it. Okay, the flight is now boarding. So let's head to our gate, literally right in front of the lounge. Honestly though, I thought the lounge was legitimately good, but I wasn't that impressed for a first class lounge. There was just much more of a crowd than what you would have expected. Moving on from my extraordinarily first world problems, since taxis in Tokyo are rather expensive, we chose to take the Haneda Airport Express from Hamamatsujo Station, where we arrived with plenty of time to spare, especially for Jessica. Our aircraft today is a Boeing 777 bound for San Francisco, with an estimated flight time of just over nine hours. Although to be honest, I wish it was a bit more. Looking at the seat map, we can see that there are only eight seats in this first class cabin, laid out in a one to one configuration, with seats in the middle having a privacy divider that can be raised or lowered. My seat today is 2K, a window seat on the right side. Honestly, all the seats here are pretty great, so you can't really go wrong, but if you want the very most in privacy, I would personally recommend 2A or 2K. Our jet bridge is so exclusive that even business class isn't allowed. Let's take a look at our seat now. Wow, this is seriously amazing. This product is so modern and has just so much space. The absolute highlight of the suite is of course the gigantic 42 inch 4K screen, the largest of any seat in the sky. Some of the goodies we receive are slippers, pajamas, a cardigan, headphones, and an amenity kit. More on that later. Everything about the suite screams modern and sleek. It really is a shame that ANA doesn't operate this product on more routes. Soon a very friendly flight attendant comes around with a tray of amenities I can choose from. Of course, I grab one from basically everything. As I'm sitting here, I really just can't get over how good the screen looks. Like you have to trust me here, it looks way better in person. Camera does not do it justice. For the seat controls, we'll find those on our right with basically every option you could ever need except for maybe a massage function. Additionally, we'll find the IFE remote here, which worked like a charm. Behind me, we'll find two reading lights, which are independently controllable. And above us, thank God there are individual air nozzles. For storage, there is a plethora of options, ranging from the cubby in front of us, a wardrobe in the suite store, and two more cubbies to the right, one of which acts as our power connectivity hub. On our left, we'll find even more storage space, as well as a tablet holder, which doubles as a mirror. Now this was not a full flight at all, so the seat next to me was empty, which will become relevant later. I also want to note something here. Every suite has a pair of full shutting doors, but I have the IQ of an intelligent baboon, so I forgot to film them while closed. Did I mention the seat has a lot of storage? Yeah, even at our feet, there's more space to store stuff. Oh, and see where the pajamas are laid out in front of us? That's actually a second seat kind of, where you can have someone else in first class join you for a meal. That would have been really cool if Jessica was here. 
In no time at all, the safety video is played and we begin our pushback. Soon, we take off into the stunning Tokyo sky bound for San Francisco. Our departure time was 11 p.m., and our estimated arrival time is 4 p.m. on the same day, which makes our flight time just over nine hours. For the tray table, we can pull it out in front of us, and it folds open. And even when it's folded open, we can still slide it forward, which makes it very easy to get out of the seat even during dining time. With the table open, let's take a look at the amenity kit. Provided by Globe Trotter, it contains all the basics like eye shades and earplugs, in addition to a set of cosmetics by the Ginza, which holy moly, these are expensive. Here are also the other amenities I grabbed earlier from the flight attendant with the tray. First class passengers are provided with a Wi-Fi card, which is supposed to cover me for the entire flight. I tried connecting to the network with my phone, but I was not able to get the login screen to open up. I'm now ready to dine, so to get more comfortable, I adorn the provided slippers, which were nice. Okay, so the most disappointing part about this experience, the food. Now before you all freak out, let me explain something here. This is an overnight flight. ANA is notorious for heavily reducing their service offerings for these type of flights. And I did know this going in, but I didn't expect it to be this cutback. I am not saying at all that the food isn't enough to make a good sufficient meal out of it. All I am saying is this is a lackluster offering for a ticket that normally costs $10,000 one way. If you do plan to fly ANA first class, I highly recommend trying to be on a daytime flight for the full food and full service experience. Fortunately, the drink choices still look to be great, so I did choose to have a glass of the 2004 Krug, which is valued at a minimum of $300 a bottle. If you're flying on certain routes, you can also have the Hibiki 21 Whiskey, valued at well over $1,000 per bottle. To be honest, for the champagne, I really only had it for the flex. I don't like alcohol, I'm not an alcohol drinker, so I didn't enjoy it much, but I'm sure that anyone who does like alcohol would love it. And no question about it, I chose to accompany this with a glass of sparkling water. The meal service starts out with a vegetarian version of the amuse bouche, basically just vegetables. The table is then set and it's time to get started with the real food. I had the corn soup and vegetarian ramen. Both of these were absolutely delicious, especially the ramen. And I say this as someone who normally is not a ramen fan. My only gripe here is that this is literally the exact same meal I was served when I flew ANA business class before. And keep in mind, this is not a special vegetarian meal or anything. These are literally on the normal first class menu as normal options. If ANA wants to make their first class product stand out against their already very competitive business class, they're going to need to make sure the food is a legitimately improved experience. Just to be clear though, I did enjoy the meal. I'm getting pretty full and none of the dessert options honestly look that good, so I chose to end my meal here. Let's check out the lavatories now. They do excel here with two dedicated lavatories for just eight first class seats, meaning you'll basically never have to wait. The restrooms are pretty spacious and they are sparkling clean. There was not a single time I visited the restroom where the toilet paper wasn't completely folded and everything neatly organized. The flight attendants were on top of keeping this place to perfection. My favorite thing about these is that they have Japanese style bidets. No one, and I mean no one wants to have to shift it into manual mode on an airplane. So these are greatly appreciated. Another great touch is the changing platform, which means when changing into the pajamas, it doesn't require you to put your feet on the floor. I prefer to sleep in shorts, so I didn't end up changing into them, but I did take the pajamas with me. Coming back from the lavatory, I find my bed already made for me. Notice how this is actually the seat next to me. The flight attendant had asked if I wanted a separate seat for my bed, so I'd have a separate place to eat and sleep. And of course, I said yes. Talk about the pinnacle of luxury flying, having a seat just to sleep in. The bedding provided was overall pretty great. My favorite two parts being the fluffy duvet and the memory foam pillow. This is a huge improvement over ANA's business class bedding, which was pretty basic. The only real improvement they could make here would maybe be a thicker mattress pad. I know that Japan Airlines has a pretty good one, but I had no problems falling asleep here. Very nice bed with ample space. A few hours prior to landing, I wake up to have my second meal. Before eating though, let's take a look at what might be the most unique and coolest part of this first class experience. The massive, 42 inch 4K screen is insane. The provided headphones are no slouch either, being made by Sony and featuring active noise cancellation. The selection of movies was also excellent with a pretty good variety of offerings available. I chose to watch John Wick, which was fun to view with such a vibrant and clear display. 
Remember you're on an airplane here. Seriously, the videos do not do this justice. You have to see it in person. It's just so weird to see this big and this clear of a screen on an airplane. Soon, my table is yet again set, and I order a glass of sparkling water to start the day. Some bread was brought out, which was pretty good. The main dish is then served, which is tofu, I guess. Yeah, it was tofu. Honestly, fairly tasty. Keep in mind, this is about 2 p.m. Pacific time now, so this is a lunch and not a breakfast offering. Served alongside the tofu is broccoli and other vegetables. No doubt a good meal, but nothing to write home about. And I washed it down with even more sparkling water. It was getting pretty close to arrival, so my table was cleared and then we started our descent. Before we land, let me tell you exactly how I booked this seat. Normally, finding a seat on international first class with points is almost impossible. But luckily for me, someone in my community group posted an alert of completely wide open space due to an aircraft change on this route. I cannot stress enough how rare it is to find a wide open international first class award space. So I booked immediately. If you'd like to get alerts like this about award travel space and other amazing deals as they pop up, please join the 100% free Travel Lane Discord group at the link in the description. There have been some amazing alerts in there and we will continue to keep posting more. In summary, ANA The Suite is an amazing first class product. It is extremely modern, spacious, has the world's best in-flight entertainment screen, and has wonderful service. My only suggestion if flying this product would be trying to avoid a late night departure so you can get the full food experience. If you can book this seat with points, it is a no brainer. After landing, I finished my trip off in the best way possible, a Southwest flight to LAX. I hope I have been able to provide you significant value here today. Please give this video a like to help with the algorithm and subscribe to stay up to date on future content. I will see you soon.